loud, it's crazy here. When you run around and you talk to people, a lot of people are talking about the banking situation, but I'm starting to hear a lot more people start to talk about the debt ceiling and that so-called X day. Hi, Romain. It's great to be here. Yeah, we're worried about two things going forward. First is the UFOMC meeting, and second is the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling issues are not priced into the market. If we do breach that deadline, there could be 10 to 15 percent downside in equities. We are starting to see credit spreads start to widen because of it, but not really seeing an impact in the equity markets yet. The timing of the debt ceiling breach will have to do with tax receipts and when they come in. It's likely going to be around June or July that we need to come to a resolution. Otherwise, I think we're going to see much more volatility. Now, secondarily is the FOMC, which meets this week. Our view is they are one and done, one more interest rate increase, and then they hit a pause. What we don't agree is we don't think we'll see rate cuts later this year like a lot of the market thinks so. Why not? Inflation is sticky. So certain components like wages and services spending, if you look at that within inflation, we think it stays sticky. Inflation is well above the Fed's 2 percent target at this point. I don't think they're going to be able to afford to put in rate cuts until inflation hits their target. We're not even sure if inflation will hit that 2 percent target anytime in the near future. Do you anticipate that the Fed is going to take into account the issues with First Republic, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, et cetera, and that ends up being a little bit more of a factor this time around as to what they do next? Well, they certainly did in March, where people were expecting 50 basis points of rate hikes, and we only got 25 because the banking system took about 25 basis points off the table in itself. I think the First Republic J.P. Morgan resolution will be enough for the Fed to stay on track. The banking system is all about confidence. I think we put some confidence back into the system today. However, bigger picture on financials, though, it's not an area that we're interested in because we think they're going to deal with tighter net interest margins, tighter capital requirements, liquidity requirements, and more competition for deposits. So that's not great for the banking sector outlook for equities. What sectors or assets do you find attractive in this environment? In the U.S., we're more balanced because we are concerned about valuations. We're focusing on quality companies that can grow their dividends. They have strong uh, fundamentals and provide income for investors. Is that a large pool, though, right now? It is. It's yeah. across sectors. It's not growth versus value as much as it is just quality companies with strong free cash flow. Then we like emerging markets. The dollar could weaken as the U.S. moves more to, towards a recession. I think that's positive for emerging markets, also with China reopening and more reasonable earning estimates going forward. And we prefer fixed income over equities. You can own high quality, high yield, get total returns in the high single digits. And then we prefer alternatives. Private credit tends to be more resilient in an economic downturn. And also infrastructure tends to be recession resilient. We'll talk about a little bit about fixed income and what you find attractive there. If we are near the end of the Fed tightening cycle or some sort of pause here, does that create a, a balance where maybe that yield isn't going to be enough to keep people invested? I think a lot of the pain of higher rates is priced into fixed incomes. And now you're in fixed income. Now you're at this point we are seeing attractive total returns. But you need to reach a little bit, uh, not only in quality, but reach for yield a little. That's why we're looking at high yield, double B corporates, areas like that where you can actually earn a good yield so that you can basically get the proper risk reward that you would want. Do you look at the pricing in the market right now? Do you think that it's accurate? There's been a lot of concern here. The price discovery, whether it's in the public market or the private market, is just so disjointed right now. And that's a big part of the reason why you see so many people on the sidelines. Sure. I mean, public equities are basically pri pricing at a soft landing. I think the S&P trading at a premium might be a little bit optimistic for what lies in front of us. In our view, that is a mild recession. So we are concerned there. But we need to keep in mind that people should stay invested. If you look at history, the majority of the strongest returns happen on a very narrow band of days. So if you're waiting out of the market, odds are you're going to miss those days and you're going to underperform the benchmarks. What's the number one thing the clients are asking you about? They're worried about the debt ceiling. They are really worried about the banking system, where I think this resolution does ease pressure there. And they're worried about when will inflation go away? When, you know, when will I be able to buy things at prices that I think are more reasonable? Those are all going to be challenges going forward.